Hiding in a cave that is nine times the size of the Pentagon, all underneath Kansas City is what we know as one of the safest places on Earth. After the world's most detrimental data breaches, chances are that your personal or financial data has been breached at some point, making this an extremely pressing issue for the majority of the world. So this is why LightEdge exists, a data center located 160 feet deep and through six tiers of security in Subtropolis, the world's largest underground business complex. And where are we in relation to everything else in Subtropolis? You guys were just at Huntman West headquarters. Yep. You're about two miles from there underground. So we're at the, the other side of the mine itself. And what does Light Edge do? So we provide facilities and real estate services, things that people care about like PCI, types of compliance, storage, financial services, HIPAA, compute, servers, enterprise organizations, as well as dedicated infrastructure for a private cloud for highly regulated compliant organizations. Okay, as you can see, I'm a little confused by what this guy is telling me but I think I know what will help. A little history. At one point, the transferring of data was mostly credit card information and it was exclusively via telephone lines. However, this led to long waits and when the lines were down, lots of fraud. At the same time, however, consumer computer terminals were being put in businesses and households. So for many years, they tried to transfer data between these terminals. ARPANET was formed, then TCP, then DNS, then NSFNet, and ISP, and dial-up, which connected the telephone lines to the World Wide Web. This allowed us to transfer documents, images, and videos, and it was safe. Remember those giant computers that were the size of an entire room in the 1960s? By the 2000s, many of those same rooms became data centers where all of our internet information lives. As more sensitive information was being transferred online, the ease of transaction turned into a boom for businesses, but also led to this. Their personal information may be in the hands of hackers. Data breach over at Marriott. Target hack. Did they give in to the hackers? What, maybe the biggest hack ever. Out of the ashes of these data breaches, extreme security measures have risen. After all, a lot of our lives live online, sitting in here. This gives rise to places like LightEdge, where we were given a tour through the six tiers of security and into one of the most protected data centers in the world. So you house data? So you got it. Yep. And, and, and you house it, like you said, 150 feet, feet below ground. Below ground. Yeah. So the cloud that we think of yeah. is actually underground. It's living right here. And it's underground for many reasons. The temperature is easy to keep cool as the servers generate heat, it's safe from natural disasters, and the security is tight. Being that we're below ground, we're protected from the environmentals. Mm -hmm. but, but people also want to know that their data is protected from, you know, just, a, just somebody walking in, right? Yeah, or, yeah. or a truck driving by. So there's about six or seven different layers of physical security as well. And one of them, we have a quick, just a face scan that gets me through. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. At the end of the day, I can't tell you how many secure doors we had to go through. I can't imagine a place that's safer than yeah. 150 feet underground and uh, face scanners. F yeah, f face scanners <laughs> and no risk that's of earth like earthquakes or tornadoes or any of that yeah, kind of yeah. stuff. You're, uh, you're right, that's right where you want to be, I think. That's hardcore, that's like, that's like some James Bond stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I like that, <laughs> James Bond. So this is... Uh, Another layer of security. Dead end, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you can't get through. I'll, I'll badge in and then we'll we'll just run through here real quick. There's a couple different factors um, of, okay. of security here. So let's... Uh, well, so let's what do you mean by run in? Literally, we'll go quick. Okay. Oh. So we set it off. Yeah. Is somebody going to come cuff us? Or? Yeah, no. Uh, we do have a police force down here. So oh, really? Yeah, there's a, a fully deputized police force. Um, it's a government rated building. So yeah. again, from a, a physical security standpoint, it's one of the highest rated in the, in the country. And where is, does this lead? So this actually leads right to the, to the data center itself. Okay. Yeah, right to the cloud. And nowadays, you know, computers used to take up a, a, a ton of power, a ton of heat, um, and, and a lot of space. Yeah. Now that's slowly shrinking, the footprint's shrinking, but the amount of data, right, that companies are generating and what folks are trying to protect yeah. is only growing. 
And with that growth comes not only a need for space, but a need to diversify the locations of where the data centers are placed. There's three power grids in the United States. Yep. There's an east, a west, and then there's one for basically the state of Texas. And we have a presence in each power grid. So when you even look at our facility and then take that on a national scale, yeah. we've got a very resilient uh, story, a very resilient network of data centers that can mitigate against basically any risk of power across the country. So you're pretty core to to keeping everything running. That's it. Yeah. So if something happens, I'm, I'm coming down here. <laughs> yeah. While places like this give confidence to the future of the internet, it's easy to remember how volatile the world is without it. If the worldwide internet was halted, air travel would be suspended, credit cards would be useless, the stock market would freeze, the power grid would fail, and humanity would have extreme difficulty coping with the repercussions. That being said, maybe we should all protect our data underground.